the Holy Spirit who we welcome in here today, don't we? You need to say, we welcome the Holy Spirit. We welcome the angels of God. We've come to praise the Father in the name of the Lord. We've come to be united with you in a deeper measure than ever before. We've come, Lord, to offer ourselves up as living sacrifices, to bring honor and glory to you, to see the heavens open in L.A., to see millions of people saved in our nation and in this city. We praise you for your goodness and grace. Bless the worship team today and everyone in the choir sitting out here. Amen. You're all in the choir. So I expect you to sing your hearts out to the Lord because he is good and his mercies endure forever. Father, bless today by your coming to us through the Holy Spirit and to magnify your Son. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Rise to you from the heavens to the nations hear us singing fill the air bless you thank you Lord for I want you to know that this is a plan I've always had that as the earth gets darker, I am filling my people more fully. Amen. I am present in the houses, and I am filling you with new joy, with fresh worship. Didn't I tell you you would eat? I would feed you a banquet table in the presence of your enemies. And so in these days ahead, Get ready, because I am calling you to arise. Arise in the midst of the darkness, but I will fill you and cause your light to shine like it has never shined before. So, beloved, I've waited for this time to fill you, to have you need me more, to turn to me, to worship me, and you will laugh while the world weeps. You will carry the burden, but you will be filled with my joy, for it is my joy that is your strength. Praise God.
There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its praises, Jesus, Jesus. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing your praises, The only one who saves, the only one who heals. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth. Jesus, 
Let's just press on into God. Let's just press on into God. Lobanabokushande. We magnify your most beautiful and wonderful name, Jesus, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The angels of God, the love of God, the blessed Holy Spirit, hallelujah, we love you, we welcome you. We bless your most wonderful and precious name, hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb. Glory be to the Holy Lamb in just a few minutes. And uh, if you have more to just sort of lead us in a little bit, it's fine. But we're going to receive communion. So, Lord, I just thank you for the precious mercies of God that you bring us in here to be able to love you. We want to be under the shadow of your wings all the days of our life, Lord. Dwell with you in union. Lord, we come this morning. First thing that we're going to do this morning is take communion to love you, Jesus. And magnify the holy blood of the Lamb. Magnify the precious blood of Jesus that cleanses our conscience from works that lead to death, that we may serve the living God. Amen. You can be seated. Communion, guys, come on up, and gals, I think, too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Shed Amen. for me Glory. way back on Calvary. Yes. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day. Hebrews, Hebrews 9 14. That's it. Hebrews 9 14. Yeah. It will Bye. 
that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose. It will never lose. Oh, it will never lose its power. Don't you love that song? Amen. How do you overcome by the blood? It'll never lose its power. That's how you overcome. Get with it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you're on the winning team. He's never lost a battle. He doesn't know how to lose. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. You understand that? Yeah. Next time, you'll sing that song even, you know, like you really know it, right? <laughs> no, that was great. That was, uh, that's an old Andre Crouch song. Praise the Lord. Bless his heart. He was right around the corner from us in Pacoima, I think, for many years. And uh, I like that song. It's very simple. And uh, there's the glorious gospel, right? Amen. The blood of Jesus. So are you, everybody have it up on top as well? Wave your hand. Did you get it up there? Okay, great. Okay, let's put up um, Ephi or, um, Hebrews 9, uh, 14. I just love this, you know. It's just an amazing verse. How much more then, compared to the blood of the old covenant, how much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself, offered himself, unblemished to God, to cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death. There you go. There's your help right there. Lord, I thank you. We'll finish that verse. But Lord, I thank you, praying for myself, for all of us, that the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus upon our conscience cleanses us from acts that lead to death, that we might serve the living God. So I want to praise the Holy Lamb of God today, God's beloved Son, Jesus, God Almighty, the Holy Spirit who raised him from the dead. I want to honor our Father for John 3, 16, that you so love the world. Jesus said, you so love the world. He said, Jesus, you got to go. Jesus said, I look forward to it, Father. The Holy Spirit said, I'll raise you from the dead on that third day. <laughs> Jesus said, I, you'd never let us down. We never let each other down. We have a plan that the devil, if they would have known, they never would have crucified the Lord of glory. We praise you for that. That you told us to pick up our cross so that we can find your life in us as we take off the old man, put on the new. We thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus that cleanses our conscience from acts that lead to death, that we may serve the living God. So, Lord, you said, do this in remembrance of me, and we remember you, dear Jesus, as the Holy Lamb of God. John said it best, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the whole wide world. We're so fortunate that we know you, and that this blood cleanses us. So we partake of this little symbol of the blood of, or the broken body of the Lord. We honor you today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. He also said, of course, take, drink this. It's my blood. Unless you drink it, you have no life in you. But we drink it, Lord, and we celebrate your mercy. We celebrate your love. Your mercies are new every morning. Said by Jeremiah, who saw the destruction of the city, he said his mercies are new every morning. My God, my God. If he can say it under those circumstances, we can say it all day long. Your mercies are new every morning, and here is the blood of Jesus. We receive it by faith in your holy name, Lord. Amen. So you're going to come around and collect those. How do we do it now exactly? They go to the, they do it to the center aisle. Yeah, that would be great. Here's mine. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. Raylene, I haven't forgot about you. So why don't you come up now and give your, we'll have that beautiful video. 
You do the one minute video first. That's what we'll do. I obey you. Here it goes. This is for the giving of the children through Samaritan's Purse. We give boxes of toys. We've been doing it for years. And uh, amen. Are you ready to go? Praise the Lord. No, oh, there we go. It's not working. Oh, it's not working right now. Nevertheless, we have next week. Yeah, we have next week, Raylene. Nothing keeps Raylene down. Nothing. You know, this is like, this is like a, 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 a quiet outfit for Raylene, you know. She, but inside, she's even more vivacious and overwhelming. Yeah. And joyful, always. I'm going to take that one minute and Goody, confirm please do. what Pastor Pam said about laughter. Last night, we watched some YouTubes and belly laughed for over an hour. Oh, no. No. And I have to wow. tell you, that is God's best medicine. I agree. And that is a Jesus pill. If you're <laughs> sick or you're depressed, go watch some YouTubes because that is... For example, that is the great hmm. physician's um, remedy for illness. It's awesome. They were political YouTube, so they were really funny to us. My, my, my. <laughs> I'm glad you've only got a minute. <laughs> I won't mention any names. <laughs> you know, uh, you heard about this guy who was dying. This is like 30 years ago, you know. And uh, he was dying of cancer, and he bought every single three stooges movie he could find oh, yeah. and the dude was healed <laughs> amen yeah it totally works yeah so we were going to do how to pack a shoe box for those who don't know uh, but there are instructions on the back of the label that they give you and i did want to tell everybody to please turn your boxes into the back table and I've only given out 34 boxes. We have 74 more to go. Amen. And so if you'd like more boxes, that's fine. Um, I'm a little concerned because there's so many churches that are closed this year. And that's their resource mm. in getting these boxes out to people. Wow. So whatever you can do would be awesome. I would just need you to sign out how many boxes you're taking. Thank mm -hmm. you. You know, I'm just thinking, bless God, we're going to get as many as we can, Raylene. I think we ought to go for 200, don't you? Anybody disagree with that? Or at least, I mean, really. You got 108. Well, you're going to have to go back and get some more. That's what I think is going to happen. We're going to work something out here. Yeah. Yeah. Just you're here. Oh, great. Yeah, I am, honey. <laughs> um, wow. Okay, can we just thank the Lord for that worship set Amen. today? And our worship teams, thank you, Lord. Whoa. Okay, I kept hearing, and it fits with what Raylene said too about laughter. Ooh, -ee, gee. I kept oh, no. hearing, um, what did I hear? Um, I kept hearing. <laughs> okay. Don't egg her on, don't egg her on. Um, yeah, it was something about drinking. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I am increasing your capacity to drink. And it is my Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Oh, boy. And there was another line. Oh, oh and drinks are on the house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. They Lord. are. Please. Lord. I mean, it's drink, drink, drink. That's what it is. What was that, Sandra? Drink the new wine Amen. we work today. Amen. Wow. Okay. Uh, just want to mention uh, and want to encourage those that are not opening the announcements oh. that come to you every week if you're signed up. If you're not signed up, you need to either contact our office or uh, sign up at the uh, front table there to get the uh, emails. Kim does a beautiful job. Amen to that. Uh, but there's a lot in there that we're not announcing. And I think, Kim, can't we tell who doesn't open Oh, my gosh. 
Oh. Yeah, she's nodding. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe we'll get involved. Oh, there. my God. Oh, right, Pam. No. Pam will go visit the houses. Yeah. Right. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But we want you to open the yeah. announcements. And in this week's announcements, and I'm just I obviously announcing it, is uh, Sadhu. Oh, how do you say his last name? Savaraj. Savaraj. An Savaraj. Incredible, Savaraj. An incredible Savaraj. prophet of the Lord. How many of you even know who India? he is? Anybody know? Oh, well, good, oh, great. Good, a good amount. Yeah. He will be speaking uh, from Shekinah Christian Fellowship, our dear friends, yeah, Joe and Melinda Sweets Church, but it is live streaming only. So do not go out there, yeah. okay? You can live stream. Uh, the information will be, I'm sure, on Shekinah, and also you can check uh, our announcements. And I think it's Friday. Does it start? It's either Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or somewhere in there. <laughs> Thanks so much, Ben. Okay. It's all right. It's next week. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If they have to read the bulletin now, Pam, because you really aren't helping them. So if you want to know what's going on, you have to read the bulletin. By the way, I've known Sadhu for years, and uh, he's one of the holy week. prophets of the Lord. So, yeah, okay. Um, okay. He said, no, didn't he say, open your mouth wide and I'll fill it. <laughs> He wants us to laugh. The darker Amen. it gets, Amen. the more we're going to laugh That's exactly in right. the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. He said there's rejoicing and shouting in the tents of the righteous. Amen. Praise God. At 12 okay. o'clock prayer. Say that, Pam. Oh, that's right. Very prayer. good. Yeah. At noon today. <laughs> Do you remember, you know, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, anybody over 30? You know, there had to be one guy that stayed sober. You know what I mean? The other guy was funny. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's today. It's prayer. <laughs> Today's prayer. Yeah. Thank you, honey. <laughs> okay. Rob, help her to her seat, would you? In other words. From 12 to 1. From 12 to 1. Yeah. <laughs> no, you do need to stay. Yeah, we well, are not mic now, so they couldn't hear you. Yeah, yeah, good. She said, "Amen." Yeah, it's from twelve to one, right, Pam? Yeah. One in the morning, that is. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Whoops. You knocked over the Kleenex. That's a bad sign, Robert. It means no more tears allowed. You know. Um, okay, I'm going to give you a brief recap cap of last week. Of my teaching, not Pam's. And um, <laughs> I taught last week on how how to be yeah how to be great. Anybody remember? Anybody even here? Yeah. And uh, what I told you was, I only proclaimed what Jesus said. They came to him. In Matthew, uh, you don't need to put up all these verses. i got about eight verses I'm going to go through just by memory. But anyway, it doesn't matter. But in Matthew 15, excuse me, Matthew 18, 1 through 4, they said, who's the greatest in the kingdom? Jesus got a little boy, little girl, whatever. And then he said, you must behold, in other words, look and see, what was the exact words? Um, Humble yourself as this child. And so I'm sure this little boy or girl, whoever it was, in the hands of God, the Creator, um, their little spirit just humbled itself. And, uh, and this was the illustration. He said, that's what makes you great. And then the apostles who were walking down a road, they were deciding who's the best among them. And we never do that, of course. But um, Jesus overheard them. And then, of course, Zebedee's mother got into it and said, Jesus, I have, a qu I have a request. I have a prayer request. I want my two boys at your right hand and your left hand. You understand that, Jesus? He said, okay. And so the Lord said, well, um, can you guys drink the cup? And they, that was what he said, by the way. That's what he said. Drinking the cup is to bear your cross even unto death. That is, 
Yes, martyrdom, but become living martyrs. That's what I'm teaching you to become is living martyrs, just so you know. That is death to self, which I'll explain more today. So he said, okay, you must be servant of all then. That's how, it's, that's how you're going to be great. Now, I'm going to go through very quickly the first three chapters just by memory, to be honest with you. In Ephesians 1.3, because I'm going to tell you the condition I'm telling you what God has done for you. And then in chapter 4, Paul says, by the way, this is how you walk worthy of that. Okay? So you want to know that. You want to know what God's doing, what God has provided, but you also want to know what does he require. Amen? And um, sometimes preaching is what God has done and promises everybody's excited, but without the conditions, you you won't get it. And um, without knowing what he requires. So as I use the illustration and the little term I got from a beloved woman 30 years ago who was finished a 40-day fast. The Lord told her, your character must catch up with your calling. <clears throat> so I said that last week and, um, and preached it many times, especially in the traveling ministry years ago. But um, so I used J- uh, uh, David as an illustration and Joseph, Moses, Abraham, Sarah, many, but especially David and Joseph, um, all the things that they went through, that was their cross, and then at at, at, uh, 30 years old, um, their character caught up with their calling enough for them to go through a phase of God using them. Now, David still had character flaws and issues after that. Joseph may be one of the, may be one of the greatest examples of a Christ-like man in the Bible, in the Old Testament, particularly Joseph. All the things that he went through. Now, that was his cross. Everybody has their cross to bear. You say, well, what is it? It's the path that you are on. In other words, whether you made mistakes or not through a marriage or this or that or you did this at one time or you were involved in that at another time, whatever, all these things that you go through, like Abraham and Sarah, you know, they made big mistakes. I mean, Abraham, you know, lied about her. She was very beautiful. He was afraid for his own wife, and he said, yeah, you know, she's my sister. And the king was getting ready to have relationship with him, uh, with her. And uh, the, the, the Lord said, you better not or I'll kill you. <laughs> so he went back, Abimelech went back to Abraham and said, bro, what are you doing? All the wombs were closed in the nation. Wow, big deal, right? So we're dealing with a God who should be feared and reverenced but adored as well. And uh, the fear of God's coming, so get ready for it. It's going to change people's theology for sure. We've had um, what I'll call uh, years ago um, butter knife preaching. But the sword is coming to cut away the old nature and the lies and deception and every every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God so that we can be circumcised in heart. That's what a true Jew is, or Paul said in Romans 2.29. So anyway, we come to this thing where in Ephesians 1.3 it says, you're blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Okay, give them to me, God. Get me up there, whatever. I was teaching on Thursday night, uh, which we do. I, do. I do a Bible study every Thursday night, and I was teaching them how to ascend. How, what does that mean? How to mount up with wings of eagles. How do you do that? Well, the Bible says you must wait on the Lord. Wait means a couple of things. It means to be woven into as a rope, like a three-stranded rope, four-stranded rope, whatever. In other words, into union with God. As you wait on him, you come into union with God. How do you do that? Well, Psalm 46.10 says, be still and know that I am God. As you're still, the knowledge of God comes into you. As you're still, the knowledge of God comes into you. I was teaching him on Thursday night, and I said, okay, we're going to have a little exercise. I'm going to name some things that Jesus is. He's Lord. He's healer. He's deliverer. He's your high priest. Uh, He sent the Holy Spirit to you. And if you focus on one of those things as Jesus as your healer, Jesus as your high priest, Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just focus on one for a few minutes. We'll take five to seven minutes, I said, and then that verse will begin to be imparted to you. 
it'll be fed and watered into your spirit. Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. As you meditate upon the scriptures, look unto him. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles, Corinthians, you know, 3, 17 and 18. As we behold him, we are changed. You got it? So I told him about eight or nine things that Jesus is. And I said, behold him and that will happen to you. And I think three or four people gave testimony. I think we had maybe, it was a small night that night, maybe 15 or so, I don't know. Usually maybe 25, something like that. And uh, then I told him what I had seen and uh, how the Lord had, uh, quite frankly, come to me and, uh, in, by the power of the Spirit. So there's ways to connect with God, but it says that if we wait on him, we ascend. That's number one. So that's how you enter into the heavenly places. It's one way. Worship and praise is another. The Spirit came in here. It was like a wind, like a river. Started to come and move at different times, different songs differently. And um, I'm sure that some of you could perceive that. It says also that we have been placed. Uh, it says that you've been adopted. You're not adopted. You are placed as a full son and daughter of God with God's sperm and God's DNA inside you. Okay? Something up? Oh, offering? Okay. Did I, I didn't even take it. Okay. All right. Here we go. Lord, and it's serious. I just forgot. Lord, thank you because you guys are, are paying the bills. So I don't mean it that way. I mean that it's important because you work and you give to him. So, Lord, I'm not trying to make this light at all. I want to thank you, first of all, for the people who have been with us for so long, others. I thank you, Lord. We moved into this building, and uh, it didn't go well for two years. We had people leave, and now it seems like you're rebuilding us, but we praise you that you always minister to their needs and to ours. You've made tithe as a way that you open the heavens, and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. So if, you're, if you give here, some people give online. Can we put that up? Giving online. If you're writing a check, some people give checks still here or cash. You have envelopes in front of you. You should have them. And um, you write the check to TGP. That's the gathering place for short. Yeah, TGP, the gathering place for short. And uh, you can write a check, cash, or credit card on those envelopes, which they'll come around in a few minutes to um, receive those. So we'll give them about five minutes, Rob, and then remind me again. Okay, it says in chapter one of Ephesians that you have been adopted. It's not the right word, it's huasia, and it means to be placed as a son. You are placed and imparted the ability to grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, okay? You start out as a baby, a little seed Christian, Christ later on becomes formed in you, but we're to go on into maturity where Christ in you, the hope of glory, rises as a morning star and he begins to take over until he begins to, as it were, become the majority inside you. And uh, by the way, I just want to mention this, <clears throat> no generation has ever fulfilled these verses. I just want to tell you that. I'm not saying some people didn't. Individuals, men and women that are my heroes, I think were as filled with God in their generation as anybody that we know of. <clears throat> but because we're in the last days, Jesus is coming back for a bride without spot and wrinkle, of which some of those people are, are a part of it up in heaven. But he wants a multitude. That's why we're shifting into, at least I have been, for years to teach directly on how to live in God and become like him. That's what we taught last week. That's what I'm teaching this week. So uh, with that in mind, he said that you are placed as a son so that you can become a full, mature son in Christ. Everything is inside you in seed form. That's the major issue. Then it goes on to say that you're seated with Christ in the heavenly places, right? Ephesians 2, 6. Now, you're seated there, all right, but to the degree that Christ is formed in you, to that degree you will function there. Just want you to know that. And uh, Colossians 3.10 tells us that, and uh, so does... Uh, uh, Genesis 1, 26 and 27, they were given dominion because they were in the full image. And then as we are renewed in the image of Christ, we function in the heavenly places more and more and more. There you go. So I want to um, mention here in chapter 3, oh, it says also in chapter 1 in Paul's prayer, there's two prayers in chapter 1 and chapter 3. And Paul mentions in the first prayer that resurrection power is made available to us. How was resurrection power released in us? 
as you pick up your cross and die in areas, resurrection comes. The, the death of the natural brings forth this resurgence of the power and the life of Jesus inside you. Paul preaches this perfectly uh, in many places, but um, Ephesians or uh, Philippians 2, 1, uh, starting at verse 3, really verse 1, 2, and 3 there, go all the way down, shows you how Paul and how we are able to walk with our cross, okay? And that's when resurrection power is released within you. I'm going to just switch and say that in the third chapter, there's a, some of the greatest unbelievable prayers ever in all of Scripture are in Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 3 <clears throat> through the Apostle Paul, let alone uh, Jesus in um, John 17. We'll go ahead now and receive the offering and those who are making up their offering. That's great. So now we'll go with the condition, and here it is. So he says that in Ephesians chapter 3, he prays that God's Spirit, by His Spirit, you be empowered in your inner man so that Christ can be formed in you. <clears throat> and he goes on to talk about being filled with the fullness of God. That is to have the richest measure of the divine presence to become a people, a body, wholly flooded and filled with God Himself. Then he says in the last verse of chapter 3, Now unto him who was able to do this, now unto him who was able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think, according to his power that's at work within you, unto him be glory forever and ever throughout all generations and so forth. Amen and amen. So those are incredible things, right? I mean, wow. Every one of them is amazing. I've, we've taught on all of them, but let's go to Ephesians now 4, chapters one, or verse 1 through 3. This is what Paul says here. Now, he says, I appeal to you as a prisoner of the Lord. Isn't that something? You know, hey, Paul, uh, how come you're not out of jail? Uh, hey, Paul, you know, or people rejected you, whatever. But he says, as a prisoner for the Lord then, I urge you to live a life worthy of, of the calling you have received. That calling was in chapter 1, 2, and 3, let alone other places in the Bible, of course. So he says, you have to live worthy of that. This is really, really, really important. You know, I'm in the process of writing something I'll later on publish, but I have, I think it's 40 ingredients in Scripture. And one is that is not really taught is it conditions and or maybe a little more heavy condition, a warning, you know. If the bridge is out, you don't want a promise. You want the warning, right? Warnings can save you. And this is a warning to all who read the first three verses or ch chapters. <clears throat> Paul is, a, is appealing to them as a prisoner in the Lord then. I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. There it is. See, David and all, uh, all of them, David, okay, here, you're going to be king, okay? You're going to go through hell, bro. The king is going to try to kill you, and you're going to go through terrible times. But if you're faithful, you'll be king. He was faithful. Joseph gave him a dream, got a personal prophecy at 17 years old. Hallelujah. But he didn't tell him, well, by the way, you're going to go to Egypt, but you're going to be sold as a slave as, because you're screaming in a well and your oldest brothers decided not to kill you. Right? Was all that explained to him? No, he had to walk it all out. It's called the cross, right? So that's what we go through many times. We all do, whether we like it or whether we believe in it or not, it's happening. Because you must pick up your cross to be his disciple. That is, endure the path that you're on with your mistakes misunderstandings, injustices, whatever, they all qualify you. Our suffering is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be within you, right? Paul taught that. 2 Corinthians 3 or 4, 17. So he says, as a prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you receive, uh, to, to, uh, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. How, Paul? What am I supposed to do? Here we go. Be completely humble and gentle. Isn't that, that's what I was teaching last week. Same thing. Why? Because Jesus said that's how you become great. He says be completely humble and gentle. Now, I just want to say this. My wife and I, many of you, we, I've been involved in the faith message. I was involved in prayer and intercession. We were involved in uh, inner healing, deliverance, you name it, counseling, all of that, uh, sanctification, the prophetic. We were involved right there in the prophetic, totally, Pam and I, with uh, the, some of the leaders, 
And uh, then in the apostolic, the same thing. But one of the things I realized, and that's when I go back to Scripture, I thought, hmm, if we're not teaching humility, a lot of that stuff isn't going to come to pass. That's the condition. See? So you always want to be taught the condition. Or also, how? In other words, you know, how do I do this? Well, this is how you do it. You do it by partaking of Jesus. That's the answer. How do I become completely, completely humble and gentle? Well, I'll just tell you how. Uh, Jesus said, come to me and learn of me. I am humble, lowly of, heart, lowly of heart. He imparts it to you. Are you ready? Jesus imparts to you everything he commands you to be and do. You can do nothing without me. He says you need me totally. The first beatitude is those who are poor in spirit, those who know that they need the Lord. There's the whole kingdom of God. Actual Greek is the whole kingdom of God is available to you. Kingdom of heaven. It's all available to you. You know you need God. Come on in and just live humbly before us. Jesus will be your humility. He will impart it to you as you commune with him. Spend quality time with him. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Isn't that beautiful? Let's go down to the next verse. Make every effort to keep, not to make. What's the unity of the Spirit? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When you are led by them, this is how you know you're led by them, and to what degree you're led by them, to the degree that the fruit of the Spirit is in you to such a degree that your friends realize it. <laughs> the people close around you realize it. Not you or not me claiming it. I bless God I got them all, you know. Well, we'll find out, you know. <laughs> as soon as you open your mouth, it's easy to tell. We can taste it. So one way or another. <laughs> but make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. That is to say, the Holy Spirit anchors us. It's one of the things that He gives us is His precious fruit of the Spirit. Peace is, you know, it's wonderful. It's the peace of God. He says, when you come into that, maintain it. Don't mess it up, you know. Come into the unity of the Spirit. How do I do that? Well, obviously, I have to have it imparted to me. Part of the fruit of the Spirit is peace. So that's why you fellowship with people who have, to some degree, the fruit of the Spirit dominate their human natural personality. Their human Natural personality. Amen. Thank you. So, how do you know? Well, over a period of time, you're a little more kind, a little more, you know, a little more this, a little more that, to show that you're under the unity of the Spirit. That's what he said. Now, I'm going to read to you. I'm almost done, honey, believe it or not. I am, I'm going to read to you. This is out of the uh, Peterson translation, right? We love him, right? The Message Bible. A lot of people are reading, uh, obviously, Brian Simmons. You know who... You know who uh, wrote the uh, Passion Bible? Brian Simmons. Yeah, that's his name. And I actually preached in his church, I think, in 99 or so. He's a, a great guy, but he translated all that. So here's what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4, the last part. Mark that you do this. In other words, I warn you to not be strolling, uh, strolling off down some path that goes nowhere. Mark that what you do with humility and discipline, not in fits and starts, but steadily pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, steadily pouring out yourselves, pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love. Isn't that beautiful? That's it. So you want to be great in the kingdom of God? Become an apostle. Become a prophet. Become this. Da -da 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 -da. No, it doesn't say that. If you want to be great, you have to come and humble yourself as this little child. And that little child must have been looking up into Jesus' eyes. I don't know what that little child was doing. But Jesus, he brought that little boy or girl up into his arms, and something must have happened because he said, you've got to enter the kingdom like this. He said, you'll never enter the kingdom unless you be converted and become like this child. No, notice that. You'll never enter the kingdom. Matthew 18. In fact, put up Matthew 18, 4. Is that going to be hard? Matthew 18, 3 and 4. Isn't it amazing? It's like, well, this is a sweet teaching and so forth. You cannot get into the kingdom of God unless you are converted and become a child. And 
Your spirit, by the way, bears witness to that. Your spirit wants to say, listen, just feed me a little bit more and we'll, help, we'll get it all together, you know. And he is fed, your spirit is fed the word of God. Truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. That's why the first thing that Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel. And the best translation in Isaiah 60 verse, uh, 61 verse 1 is, the humble. So your goal to be great in the kingdom is be a humble servant. Your goal in the kingdom of God should be to be a humble servant. Believe it or not, and I'm not there, but I'm going there by the grace of God, I pray, to prefer others above myself. This is all Philippians chapter 2. Paul teaches you how to be able to sit with Christ in the heavenlies in that verse. You about ready? So I will just pray over you, and I'll say that we'll teach more on these things, but if you, James 1.21, we can put that up. How are you going to do this? This is where you start. This is the starting line. James 1.21 is the starting line. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly what? Here's, Here's what I'm telling you. This is where you start. Humbly accept the word planted in you, which can what? Bring salvation, save you, heal you, deliver you. I'm pretty sure that's sozo, which means to be redeemed, to be taken care of, to be rescued, to be saved, to be healed, and all that. So let it start with the Word of God imparted and implanted into you because it has, listen carefully, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the DNA of God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. So when you read the Bible, you are imparting to your spirit the DNA of God. To the degree that you do it, to that degree it will be imparted back to you. Do you understand? To the degree that you do that, to that degree it will be imparted to you. To the degree that you partake of Jesus, to that degree. You, you have as much of God in you as you've wanted to have in you up to this very moment right now. And you can read the Bible, meditate on the Scriptures, and sit before the Lord, and He will teach you, which I think I'll teach more of this, next week of how he teaches you internally. But here's the deal. God is going to bless you because you love him. He's going to help you be transformed into the image of Jesus. May we fulfill the verses of Scripture that says it will be filled with the fullness of God. Amen. And bless you. Amen. You can do it. Nothing is impossible. He will help you. That's true Christianity. He will help you be a good Christian. Right, honey? That was great. Wow, thank you. I can see it really fits with, the, with the, uh, what the Lord's given me, which is always so encouraging. I am going to talk a little bit about Joseph, too, which you mentioned several times. That's who we named our son after. We were told to name him Joseph Robert after the Joseph who became a deliverer, who was a great leader in the Bible. But I wanted to mention too, humility is so key. Humility is so key that the Lord ensures that he puts us in continually humbling situations where we don't have what it takes. Like right now, every time I stand up, I am acutely aware that I do not have what it takes because you don't want what I have. You want what he has. And so I woke up this morning. We went down to San Diego yesterday to surprise our daughter on her birthday. She turned 39 and... uh, So we drove down the two and a half hours and then seeing her open the door and burst out crying was uh, worth it all. (laughs) And then we had a great meal, had a great time, uh, and then turned around and drove back last night. So this morning he was having to kind of drop the message uh, on both of us. But I woke up and uh, this is what I was hearing. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. 
but I have to weaken you to let me do it. Thank, you. Thank God. Because I'll tell you, when man is strong, he will build. And God may bless some of what man builds, but he will not inhabit it. He will not live in it. And so what are we after? We're after habitation. And so you have had to be continually weakened. And you've had to be humbled. And he does that in so many wonderful ways, doesn't he? Injustice, unfairness, being put in positions where you know you don't have it. That's basically just life. I mean, I, that's it. I mean, I can't be a good mother. I can't be a good wife. I've tried complete failure. And the harder I try and the harder you try, the tireder you get. And then the enemy just jumps on your head and beats you with your inability to produce when actually it's not a liability, it's a gift from God. Blessed. He said blessed to be envied. Great are the poor in spirit. They get the whole kingdom. Hannah, she's one of the ones that I've, she's kind of my main gal in the Bible here for me personally, and her barrenness. Hannah, after she had Samuel and she gave him, I don't know how she did it, the Bible is so understated. She, anyway unbelievable that she would then turn she promised this child to the Lord and she gave him Samuel took a little boy that she had weaned and took him to the temple to a priest who was being judged wasn't even a good teacher anymore and left him I think that's the holy thing. When you are weakened, you're going to take your hands off. What is the Lord's? But she left him. And then it said she worshipped the Lord. And she said... Uh, my mouth has been enlarged against my enemies and I will boast in the Lord and then she said something so amazing she's the whole thing's amazing but this verse she said um, the bows of the warriors are broken but those who stumble who stumbled are armed with strength The bows of the strong are broken. The Lord broke, breaks them. Because he does not need our strength. And then she goes on to say, it is not by strength that one prevails. See, it's upside down in the world. This is a key verse. If you want to put it up, Betsy, Luke 16, 15. I've referred to it many times because it's constantly a shock. This is Jesus speaking. He's speaking to the Pharisees, but he said to them, you are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of others. But God knows your hearts. Here's the verse. Here's the upside down kingdom versus the world. What people value highly is detestable in God's sight what what is valued in this world it doesn't say God just doesn't like it it's detestable it's abhorrent he hates it what do we value 
in this world. Strength, independence, what's the American way? Pulling yourself up by the bootstraps. Don't let anybody see your weakness, hide it at all costs. And it's completely flipped in the kingdom. So what we find detestable, God highly values. And because the world screams at us all the time, through every means possible, especially the media, the movies, the Holy Spirit is so intent on strengthening us and building us up and showing us what does the Lord value. What is He after in us? Because it says, you know, Isaiah 55, His ways are not our ways. His thoughts, my thoughts are not your thoughts. They're, they're just a little bit apart. They're kind of like yours. No, they're not. It says, as far as the heavens are from the earth. Is that a big gap? That's how far your thoughts are from my thoughts. And my ways are from your ways. So we have to have his ways revealed to us out of this word by the Holy Spirit. By Holy Spirit, I should say. He has to reveal to us the ways of God. Right? Otherwise, I mean, and believe me, I've been there. I'm still there. Const we're going to constantly learn. But here we are freaking out over what's going on and what's happening in my life and he would repeatedly the main thing he did Rick would say the same thing is he would say go to Joseph go to Moses go to Hannah because your life is not going to make sense judged by the world or in the world your life makes sense in here only in here. Amen. This is the pattern. Jesus is the pattern. Glory. And so, what did Jesus show us? I mean, the Son of Almighty God, born not by any man's involvement. Boy, there's a statement right there. put in a little virgin girl's womb the perfect representation of God. Thank you, Lord. Walked on this earth. And what did he say? I'm going to go out and do this and that, and I'm going to be able to do this and that, and yes, today I'm going to heal this person and that. He said so clearly over and over, I don't do anything unless I see my father do it. Why would we live any differently? Is God a control freak? I just have to control you? And you just have to do only what I show you? No, it's liberating. We're not meant to bear the responsibility of having to produce. Oh, what a terrible weight. I'm getting freer in it. But I remember just starting out teaching and then we traveled. We were on staff with Che and Lou and at Harvest Rock, and then we started traveling, and I was just in agony. And if people, if it was a great sermon, it was like, oh my God, and then I got to do it again. 
then they have expectations. So what the Lord had to do? Hammer. You can't do it. It's impossible. Because he wants us free, like children. Children don't bear the weight of producing anything. They run around and just live and produce. Life. Mess. Chaos. No. Beauty. They're running around free. This is what the Lord's after. So I, he's saying, I just want you, here's what I want you to do. I don't want you to build. I want you to receive and follow. What? Any baby can nurse. That's all we're supposed to do. Drink, drink, drink. The darker it gets, the more we're going to drink. And the more he's going to pour it out. He's got a banqueting table. This isn't just like, oh, wow, let me just get you some veggies here or something. No, it's a banqueting table prepared for his people to eat in the presence of their enemies. And so he's not a control freak. He wants us delivered from the responsibility of producing. We simply receive and follow And he's after relationship. And when you're strong in yourself, you don't need. Mm -mm. No, that's why we like it. We actually think it's, it's safer. We feel better. No. Again, it's all about he's emptying to fill us. And it's about knowing him, finding out again when we least deserve it. Instead of a slap, we get open arms. And he is so intent on teaching this. Went through some different times with our kids. And uh, especially maybe in their teen years. Not all, all not all three, but anyway. And he kept saying to me, Pam, love, love, it never fails. It never fails. Keep the bridge. Keep it open. Give him a way to come back. I wanted to blast him and let him have it. Don't you know? No. No. That's not our Heavenly Father's way. It's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. The goodness, not the toughness. He loves you. He knows you're weak. He made you that way. You're a clay vessel, the Bible says. He picked up mud. Mud. When he formed Adam, he could have, hey, come on, he wasn't left with mud. He makes the whole earth, it's beautiful, and then, oh, wow, I only have mud left. Just have to use mud here for man, who's made in my image. No, he could have picked steel. He could have picked anything. We, this glory, it says, is in fragile earthen vessels. Glory to God. I am fragile. You are fragile. Let's rejoice in it. Paul says, I boast, in, I boast in my weakness because then the power of God is able to be displayed in its fullness. What? I thought I had to just listen to all the CDs and get it all down and get it straight and feel strong and feel powerful. No. 
Again, it's the exact opposite. Yeah, we listen to CDs. We need to learn. But you got to get in this. I'm talking to myself. I'm really having, man, I'll tell you. The Lord knows. The, excuse me. The enemy knows. The key is reading the word and being, having alone time with the Lord. You do not get intimate with somebody on the run. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. And I'm going to do the dishes. I'm going to do this. Oh yeah. Wow. We're really getting close. I can tell we're getting close. Forget it. I get, I get mad at Rick still 45 years of marriage. Are you listening to me? Put your phone down. Cause he's texting you guys back. No. What do we want face to face? You're that, we're, we're, we're that important. He is that, he is so after us because weakness guarantees relationship. Okay. Okay, we're just going to look at Joseph real briefly here. I, I'm trusting here. Obviously, the story of Joseph in the Bible is phenomenal. I was just rereading it this morning, trying to reread it. I, we brought home this stray, or I brought home this stray from little kitten from uh, this, our farmhouse that we go to, our funky farmhouse in uh, Utah. And the, oh my gosh, the kitten was biting the Bible, jumping on the on my lap and then she starts purring but she's so excited that if you move quick I mean ouch right on my hand I've got little claw marks all but she's doing better anybody want to adopt her <laughs> Lisa okay talk to Mark even though you're highly allergic to cats my sister-in-law here just what you need right Mark Okay, uh, let's just go to Psalm, uh, Psalm 105. Okay, how, okay, we're in a time of transition. I was just trying to review. We're in a time of transition. Talked about it last week. It's a time where we feel our vulnerability because we're having to leave what is comfortable and at least familiar and step into what is unknown and we don't know. So transition is a real time of uh, vulnerability. It, it's usually forced on us by change. That's what COVID did uh, for us. It forced a lot of change. Zoom meetings and, you know, all these other things, and then you wonderful, some of you wonderful people. Well, you're all wonderful people, but <laughs> you still, some of you are new, coming. We're kind of blown away by it. Uh, I thought Marnie said it so well that the, the um, ones we, it's, she said, uh, it's so amazing because the people that the Lord is bringing were all burning at the same spiritual temperature. Ooh, wow. Combustion is coming. It's happening. Come on. Ooh, wow. Okay. What did I say? Psalm 105? What? Oh, sorry. 16. I'm sorry. See, that's why nobody wants to really do the computer because. They'd have to try to follow me. No, but we need, we, anyone who would like to do the computer, we, we do need help with that. So you can see Betsy right after the service. Be incredible. And nobody will blame you when I'm up here. Okay, uh, I want to talk about Joseph. Okay, this is uh, so amazing. I want to read it out of mine too. Um, okay, this is... Uh, Talking about the Lord, he called down famine on the land, okay, and destroyed all their supplies of food. This, this is the Lord talking here. I sent famine. 
But he had a plan. He sent a man before them, before any of this happened. He had a plan, and he sent a man before them. Who was the man? Joseph. But how did he get there? Sold as a slave. What? Excuse me. Okay, the ne next verse thinks. They bruised Joseph's feet with shackles. His neck was put in irons. Till what he, forbid, what he foretold came to pass. Till the word of the Lord proved him true. And I love another translation. I think it's King James. Till the word of the Lord entered his soul like iron. Okay, I'm just assuming that you guys know the story of Joseph. Okay, young, young, he was uh, from a dysfunctional family. His brothers hated him. And it says, could not speak a kind word to him because it says, number one, he, bought, he brought a bad report to his father about them. Oops. And we got some dysfunction here. The father openly prefers him over the other brothers. Ooh. And he prefers him so much that he gets him a beautiful ornamental robe, which he wore every day. Would that bug you? That would really. And then, to make matters worse, he has two dreams from the Lord that totally came to pass, but either he was, and I don't presume to know, honestly. I don't know Joseph at 17, but he's 17, okay? So he either was incredibly oblivious to his brother's hatred, because it says they couldn't even speak a kind word to him, or he just had some pride issues here, because he tells them bo both dreams. And the dreams were tremendous. My sheaf stood up straight, and your sheaves of grain bowed down to me. Oh, whoopee. <laughs> this is the way. So then they had it. And then the dad, Jacob. It's like, where were you, Jacob? Because uh, weren't there like 10 brothers? 11 brothers, yeah. Okay, and so anyway, they... Um, Uh, Jacob sent Joseph out to go check on his brothers. Wow, bad call. Just go see how they're doing, Joseph. So anyway, you know the story. They saw Joseph a long way off and began to plot his death. Some of the brothers, Reuben, intervened. They didn't kill him like they had planned to. They threw him in a cistern. This is his... This, and he was... And sold him to uh, Ishmaelites who were going into Egypt. So understated. Come on. You're sold by your brothers. Okay. And that's how he got into Egypt as a slave. What? Would anyone have looked at a sobbing? Because it says later on the story, the brother said, we didn't pay any attention when he was pleading for his life and crying. He's crying and sobbing. He's being led away in chains and shackles with these total strangers to be led into Egypt. Would anyone have looked at him and said, that's the next deliverer who's only going to be second to Pharaoh? This kid, 
crying and screaming, 17 years old, rejected by his family, this kid, would anyone have said, is chosen by God? Your life, our life has been the same way. See, we've got to realize what he's after. It's unconventional training methods. I mean, wouldn't you have done, okay, me, okay, jo Joseph is going to lead Egypt. When he's 30, he spent 13 years as a slave. Three, at least three of those we know in prison. God, and who was with him in prison, does it say? God. So everything you've been through, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, has been with you. And it says in prison, God showed him kindness. I think he's going to make it more and more apparent to us and help us see how kind he has been to us in our prisons. That's the only way we've gotten through. He, it just gets me. He was with Joseph in prison. Okay. So then Joseph, you know, he even, the way he even got, and we're skipping that, I can't do the whole thing, but Potiphar's wife, Joseph's good looking, the Bible says he's well built, Potiphar's wife, we know, wants him, he doesn't do it, he's said, how could I do that to my master and sin against God? And of course she grabs his cloak, he runs, here she is a spurned woman, and she lies, and he's thrown into prison, and that's where God trained him. In prison, I started to say, if it had been up to me, wouldn't you have taken Joseph and schooled him in everything Egyptian? How, how about economics? He's going to save the nation from famine. Okay, let's train him in economics. How do you do this? How do we store food? How do we, I mean, the whole thing. Strengthen him. No. And you've been trained the same way. Through prison, through difficulty, through difficult jobs, unfair bosses. I mean, it could go on and on. Things that fail. Because it was interesting, the, the brother said, let's get that dreamer. They were after his dreams. That were given to him by God. We all have that in us. Dreams given by God. Callings, not our dreams. Thank God he gets that out of us. But his dreams for us. I'm going to wind it down. What? Yeah. I got five minutes. Okay. Let me just look here. This is what happens when you get the message in the morning and you don't have time to go through it. Um, okay, we know the story, and I alluded to it last week, but after two full years, Pharaoh had a dream. And in one day, the cupbearer, see, Joseph tried to get out. He told the cupbearer, hey, when you get out, because I interpreted your dream, remember me, because I I, I'm innocent. I shouldn't be here. And get me out. Tell Pharaoh about me. 
What does it say? It's so understated. It says, the chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. But who hadn't forgotten him? The Lord, just at his time. So it says two full, I love it, full years went by. Pharaoh has a dream. Here it comes. The Lord's orchestrating it all. Pharaoh had a dream. Nobody could interpret it. And the cupbearer, ding, and he says, then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, today I am reminded of my shortcomings. <laughs> Two years later, he tells Pharaoh, listen to this, so Pharaoh sent for Joseph and he was quickly, oh my. Their suddenly's coming for those who have endured long. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. When he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, and no one can interpret it. But I have heard it said of you, that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. And here's the golden, thank you, Betsy. Here's the golden statement that shows Joseph is now qualified to lead the greatest nation at that time on the earth. I cannot do it. Glory. Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. And then just the last, so he interpreted it, the seven years of plenty, the seven years of famine, here's what you do. Joseph tells him, you store it up, and then when the famine hits, you'll be able to sell it and give it out and provide for the world, because they came from all over. And then you know, Joseph's brothers came, didn't recognize him. He recognized them. So he had a lot of forgiveness he had to go through. Because when it came time to reveal himself to his brothers, who sold him as a slave when he's crying, 17 years old, he kissed them, it says. He said, don't feel bad. Ooh, that's some inner healing here. Don't feel bad because what you meant for evil, God meant it for good, and God sent me here to deliver a nation. And it says he comforted them. <laughs> it said, don't be afraid. And so Pharaoh said, God, uh, Joseph gives the big plan, and verse, uh, Betsy, I might as well give you a verse, th uh, 37, uh, sorry, yeah, of what, right, Genesis 41, <laughs> come on, you know, figure it out. <sighs> the plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his officials. So Pharaoh asked them, the officials, can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the Spirit of God? Not him. Not can we find any man who's as smart as Joseph? Can we find any man who can interpret dreams like Joseph? No, can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the Spirit of God? And that's what 
the Lord was after. I cannot do it, but God can. And he's after the exact same thing in us. We've all learned it. We're learning it. We will forever learn it on this earth because it's completely contrary to the ways of God. But Lord, I just want to magnify your ways that cannot be figured out by the human mind. You said, Lord, if the rulers of this age had known this hidden wisdom, they would have never crucified the Lord. And so, Lord, we magnify your ways as right, as good, as faithful. You have never let us down. And Lord, we thank you that you are so utterly, totally intent on delivering us from having to produce and filling us with yourself so that you will receive all the glory shining through earthen, broken, fragile vessels so that all will know it's you and not us. And so we magnify and praise your name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. All glory to you, Lord. Amen. You know, we're going to open up in prayer, but before you go, I want you to stay five, ten minutes here. Number one, uh, we're teaching you the ancient paths. This is the only way. This is the only way. The ancient path is your personal walk with God, and it's, to, it's being used by God to empty you of self. You need to know that. And to impart to you himself. The word meek, the best translation is those who accept how God's dealing with them. Wow. And mm. they inherit the earth. They'll be involved in the millennium. That's what you need to know. Mm. So I want to switch real quickly and say that was wonderful. Thanks, honey. It's the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise his holy name. And uh, I want to pray. We're going to, this is what we do on this, what is this, the yeah. third Sunday. Um, We've only got we, two more Sundays to that, that's right. pray before the elections. That's right. So uh, we're going to pray, but tomorrow, what's happening tomorrow? Amy oh, Barrett. Oh, yeah. Right? Starts yeah. tomorrow. Now, listen, uh, Lou Engel, one of the guys that was with him years ago, um, two and a half years ago. Uh, <clears throat> Matt Lockett. Matt Lockett. Yeah. Was given a dream that God's choice was Amy Barrett. It took two and a half years. And so we're going to pray for that dear sister. She's a Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled charismatic Catholic. Amen. And we're going to pray for her together. We don't pray as Republicans, Democrats, or even as male and female. We pray as new, as new creatures in Christ, new creations in Christ, born of God. And this is the Father's will. This ain't no politics, folks. It might be in a horizontal realm, but it's the kingdom of God. Amen. This woman um, is incredible. She has five children with her husband, a sixth what? She has five children, uh, two adopted from Haiti, and she has her last one, a little boy, special needs child. And um, she's going to be not only uh, uh, you know, received and, and put in, but according to what the Holy Spirit's saying, she's going to be the swing vote, obviously, of Roe v. Wade. And when I, I love this guy, um, uh, what's his name, Zadok? Kevin Zadai, he said that Jesus, when he was with Jesus for five and a half hours, he said, the Lord said, within one hour after Roe v. Wade is demolished, a curse will be lifted off of your nation. Yeah. Amen. The sooner the better, I say. A lot of murder is because of that gate that's opened and that shed blood of those children. So we're going to pray for her this morning, and I know some of you will go. We'll release you in about five minutes, 
And I want us all to just pray out loud. You can pray in tongues, whatever you want. Lord, put in Amy Barrett for the glory of God. Save children all over the world. May the United States once again be a beacon of righteousness, Lord, that you would use this precious woman of God. Lord, I love the fact that when Scalia called his friend in Notre Dame and said, this woman has applied to me, what do you think? You know, he was the guy who was teaching all the lawyers, and he said, she's the best student I've ever had. Lord, you've granted this woman wisdom. You've granted her a godly mind. You've granted her righteousness, Lord. And we pray, Lord, not only are you going to put her in, but Lord, she's going to be the swing vote. Lord, even Judge Roberts, who vacillates back and forth, have mercy on that man or remove him. But Lord, we're going all the way. We want Roe v. Wade reversed, Lord. We want this curse delivered off of our nation. We pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We know this is your will. We're not wondering about it. We're not between two opinions. What about this, about that? God is spoken by his spirit, which should all be obvious to everybody who knows the Lord. You said your sheep would hear your voice, and we pray in the name of the Lord, may your kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven this next week, and may she be quickly affirmed. And Lord, those who would come against her, I'm just going to say flat out, they're coming against you. You will deliver her Lord, they hate her because they hate your commandments not to kill innocent children. They want to be able to do it and many other things, Lord. I pray, God, for their salvation, but I say, Lord, no way can their way continue in this nation. We are going out of ungodliness. We are going out of child sacrifice. We are delivering, getting delivered from Moloch. We are coming into the kingdom of God in a whole new way, and we give praise, honor, and glory to your name. We praise you in the holy name of the Lord. Just pray in tongues. Just pray in English, whatever you want. We're coming against this gate of hell called abortion. We come against it. We come against it in the name of the Lord. And we break your power in the name of the Lord with multitudes of Christians all over praying for this abortion gate to be destroyed in the name of the Lord. You came, Lord, to destroy the works of the devil. This is the work of the devil. And we break the power of it in the name of the Lord. The time has come, as in the days of Esther, that the tide will turn. And we praise you for it in the mighty and holy name of the glorious Lamb of God. Bless this woman. Give her wisdom, Lord. Give her strength, Lord. And all those who support her, Lord, in the Senate, Lord, bless the Republicans or Democrats, whoever are righteous, to stand up and defend her in the name of the Lord. Deliver us from wimpy Christianity. My God, let the fear of God come into those meetings, Lord. Let men tremble once again at the word of the Lord. Give her wisdom like she's never had before. Give her favor in the eyes of God and man like never before, Lord. And even the media, deal with them, Lord. Deal with the media, Lord. Deal with the gainsayers, Lord. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, have your way. Bless this woman, Lord, and turn the Supreme Court toward life once and for all. In the name of the Lord. The Gathering Place.